Welcome to People Tech, the podcast of the HCM Technology Report. We are recording from HR Tech in Vegas, brought to you by our friends and partners at Fuel 50. Here's your host, Mark Pfeffer. Welcome to People Tech, the podcast of the HCM Technology Report. I'm Mark Pfeffer, recording today from the exposition floor of the HR Technology Conference and Exhibition. And with me is Larry McAllister. Welcome. Hi, thanks for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. Well, thanks for coming. Could you take a minute and just tell us about yourself? Sure. My name is Larry McAllister. Uh, I just left the corporate world after 30 years to start my own consultancy. Uh, it's called a Corporate Humanist, uh, and it's really to help people with their t- um, HR talent strategy, technology, which equals transformation, and how to tie that all together. So mm-hmm. I'm helping some customers do that right now. This is a, a, there's been talk about transformation for a long time. Um, it seems like it's picked up a little momentum lately, maybe because of the pandemic, maybe not. But what's your view? Yeah, I think the pandemic changed everything. I think the way talent looks at the market, the way they look at their employers is completely different. There's been a shift of power to talent. Uh, they make their own decisions. So I think the reaction to that in this pandemic-affected workforce is you have to do things differently, uh, and that leads to transformation. Mm-hmm. Now, another big theme in the business has been uh, skills. You know, everybody wants to develop skills. Everybody, every employer is looking for skills. <laughs> What's your view about how an employer should holistically try to solve the problem of skilling. Yeah, that's, I mean, we say skills is the new currency, right? The more you have, the more you know, the more you can move. But I think when you take it above skills to what are you really trying to accomplish? And there's two things normally that happens in a company. One is we are going from this kind of employee to this kind of employee. And that is the quandary of now do we just go hire 500 people? Do we develop these guys? And you have to be really, really clear of what that's going to be the year after next. Because you're just building skills for now, they're going to be outdated. So a longer-term plan on skills is one. The second thing that happens is there's a disruption in, like, say, cloud, or a disruption in the way that all these small tech companies now are getting involved. Um, So how you put your talent strategy with your tech strategy has to be driven by what skills you're trying to get to and what what bus you're going to get everyone on to get there. Someone once said to me that the way to think of skills is that you either buy them, borrow them, or build them. <laughs> That's great. I love it. The three Bs? Is that what the three that Bs, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, that does, on the surface, make sense. But it seems like that would be a kind of tricky thing to envision and manage and plan for. It is. The most difficult thing is we don't know what skills people have. And so a, a company like Fuel50, you now know what people are good at, what they want to learn, and that feeds your talent strategy right? Mm-hmm. in a way that we've never been able to do that before. So, you know, I'll give you an example of a company I worked for. We were moving to more of a cloud company, and we didn't feel that the people who were not in the cloud would be able to move over, so you go immediately to buy. Let's go buy a bunch of cloud engineers and salespeople. But what I think people often forget is that's a short-term solution. Mm-hmm. And so how are you going to build skills internally for two years or three years? So then you're moving both wheels spinning at the same time. <laughs> Uh, and the only way really to do that is to know what the future is and know what you have in-house now, which in the, in the past has been like on spreadsheets. So having a great uh, HR tech platform that you can look at the entire company and, and around the world is at your fingertips has changed the way we look at skills. You know, I was listening to you talk and I'm thinking, well, here we sit in the land of dreams where all HR technology works exactly as it's supposed to. Yeah, yeah. So what's the reality? I'm not trying to bash anybody, but, you know, the real world throws things at you. It, get, it gets in your way. So you might have a great HR tech system, but it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be yeah. clunky. And how do you do with that? So I think the core artificial intelligence and in a lot of these new platforms works. It works. I says it gives you the ability to see the unseen. You can see things much quicker, get to the personal connection much faster with much more data. Mm-hmm. Outside of AI, uh, the AI stack is how do they then deliver this this stuff to you? And every single, whether there are hundreds of tech companies sitting around us, they all do it a little bit differently, uh, and they promise a little bit differently. So I think as you're going into it, we did an HR tech parade where we brought in 16 vendors and kicked the tires for weeks, and that really uh, informed us of what's out there, what's real, what's sort of a mirage. Uh, and I, I advise HR people to feel their technologist 
and to really understand what this is. But the core AI stuff is amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to you have to have an HR tech stack in order to succeed and compete in the market. What's so amazing about the AI nowadays? So say on AI match when you're recruiting, uh, it instantly <coughs> matches people's backgrounds to the job so you don't have to go searching for it. It gives you advice on, will this person return your call based on their work history? Mm -hmm. Do we think this person is maybe an underrepresented group, right? That's stuff that you would have to go research and research and research. It gets to you like that. Same thing in, in your career development. One of the cool things uh, that we like at Fuel 50 is you could say, you know, one day I want to be a VP of marketing and right now I'm an engineer. If you do the self-assessment, it tells you your next three jobs that you can take inside the company to, to have a career path, which has been a myth in the past. Now it's actually at your fingertips. So when you talk to your boss, your manager about your career, you have real data to talk about. It, it's elevated the game. Yeah. And do you think that the frontline managers are buying into all this? So, you know, the technology, people are, people are technology savvy. I mean, your phone is super advanced, right? I think the hard part is the change in what that means. So if this person comes to you and says, hey, I want to move to this next job and I know I can make it, people are afraid to be like, oh, I don't want, I don't want my people to go. So it's been a mindset change as opposed to a technology change. You know, when I talk to people about this, it seems like the technology always sort of comes down to decision support. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, do you think that's true? And, you know, how does a company forecast their future needs in a world like this that's moving so fast and, yeah. and all of that? I think it's a combination of what is the technology telling you about what's going on inside of your company? What do your employees want? What are they working on? What do they want to be? Then you have to marry that where, where are we going as a company? And, and before, without having the skills and the, and the motivations and the passions in one spot, you're guessing. So I think it's really taken a lot of the guesswork and flying blind out of what you have inside of your company, as opposed to even five years ago. Uh, and it gets you to a more meaningful conversation with more data. I'd like to shift gears for a minute. Sure. Let's, let's talk about the show, because it, you know, it's fun here. Um, have you seen anything, any themes among the vendors that seems kind of new to you or we just evolved a bit from the last yeah. show. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways people are going at it. Um, and there's a big focus on the employee experience. So how can we use technology so you like going to your job? It's easy to do. You know, if you think about it, we've been using our, our cell phones, our smartphones for years. Uh, and, and now you go to work and there's nothing that is up to that technology. We're starting to see much more better trends that are easier to use, better user interface that people want to want to uh, engage in. And your job, I think, as an HR expert is to figure out what's right for you. And it's usually more than one solution. It seems to me there's a lot of focus on integrations now that there wasn't eight years ago. So. Yeah. Um, so what I say is if you have artificial intelligence and an API, which means you can integrate to the bigger CRMs, you have a company. I mean, you, you, you can sell, right? There's something there for you. Uh, and so what I think we're seeing is integration is a must. And I, I think some of these companies here are starting to realize, hey, can we be partners or, or you know, co-competitors and work together to close the deal? Because our things are different but aligned. Uh, so I think the next trend is gonna be more alignment around vendors to sell a whole solution. You know, it used to be you had people saw for a work day and that was it. Uh, and all these companies come, come in and are so much faster and can integrate and, and those bigger companies are gonna have a very difficult time keeping up with this kind of innovation. So they need integration as well. Last question. Sure. Um, when you think about the next 12 months, what are the two or three things that you're really keeping an eye on? So one is how do you keep people feeling they're um, included in the company if it's, if it's a true hybrid, where a third of the people are in a, in a room and two thirds are not? You know, the, the technology is one thing, Zoom or whatever is one thing, but how do you as a leader and a team make sure you're performing at your highest? And there's some technology for that. I think the next big wave of the post-pandemic or the pandemic-affected workforce is mental fitness. There has to be a much larger focus on mental fitness. Uh, it used to be you would never want to go to work and say, man, I'm burned out or I'm tired. It was, a, it was you know, shameful. Now we need to bring it to the front and be much more proactive on how we have mental fitness and well-being with our employees because we're at that stage of this pandemic where people are just <laughs> done. Uh, and it has to be a leading indicator as opposed to a lagging indicator. 
Larry, thanks for stopping by. We yes. Appreciate your time. Thank you. This was fun. Appreciate it. You've been listening to People Tech of the HCM Technology Report. This HR Tech series is graciously brought to you by our partners at Fuel50. For all other HR, sourcing, and recruiting news, check out HCMTechnologyReport.com. The world's best-known investor and Wall Street expert, Warren Buffett, once said, Wall Street is the only place that people ride to in a Rolls Royce to get advice from those who take the subway. Mr. Buffett's quote is remarkably accurate, but how many people would rather receive advice from him than someone simply guessing? Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, your single source for Wall Street knowledge and profitable guidance. Please join me, Todd Schoenberger, and fellow trader Tobin Smith, as well as host Veronica Dudo, for a podcast known to move the needle for investors. Tobin and I are seasoned Wall Street executives with deep investment experience, and we are prepared to share our advice to those who choose to listen. Download Buy, Hold, Sell today on the Evergreen Podcast Network or your favorite podcast channel. Welcome to Don't Retire, Graduate, the podcast that asks you what you want to be when you grow up so you can graduate into retirement with a purpose and a passion, whether you're 25, 85, or any age in between. Gain actionable financial and mindset tips from your favorite authors, podcasters, and influencers to help you reach that exciting next chapter. Listen now and start building your path to financial freedom and reframing what retirement can mean to you. This is your host, Eric Brotman, reminding you, don't retire, graduate.